I can't believe we came to Doha just for this video. It's unbelievable. I can't believe we came to Doha and drank wine. Mm. Just try it. Take it back with us, finish it off. Pardon me. <laughs> oh, did, did you get that? Yeah. Did you get my burp? Oh no. Oh, no. Welcome to GCN's preview of the 2016 World Road Race Championships. This is going to be the 89th edition, and for the first time ever, it will take place in Qatar. In fact, this is the first time it will have taken place in the Middle East, and as such, the UCI have moved it slightly later in the calendar to try and avoid excessive heat, although there's still little doubt that the weather and the temperatures could play their part. We're expecting around about 35 degrees Celsius, or 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's also the distinct possibility of some wind. Hmm. Now, kicking off the championships on Sunday the 9th of October are the team time trials where both men's and women's elite trade teams face a 40-kilometre course. Now, it starts at the Low Cell Sports Complex and heads south to the Pearl of Qatar. Now, it's a poker straight course, pan flat, and is bookended by technical sections, the final of which is peppered with roundabouts. Yeah. Now, in previous editions, it's Etix, Quickstep and BMC that have dominated in four editions, they've actually got two wins apiece, but they're going to be pushed pretty hard, we think, by Movistar and also Oracle Bike Exchange. And then in the women's event, pretty much the Bolst Dolmas team are the clear favourites. But again, they're going to be pushed hard by Cervelo Bigler, Rabo Liv, and also Canyon Sram. In terms of the individual time trials, all of them barring the elite men's race will take place entirely on the Pearl Qatar, which is the artificial island which juts out into the Arabian Gulf. So the elite women and the junior and under 23 men will take place over two extremely technical laps which start and finish in Porto Arabia. Now, as you might expect, the profile of these laps is almost completely pan flat. However, there are 20 roundabouts to deal with per lap. Ooh. <laughs> Bike handling as well as power is going to be a key factor on this most unusual of courses. Now riders to watch out for in the women's event include Lisa Brunau of Germany, last year's champion from New Zealand, Linda Willemsen, who's actually medalled on six occasions in the past. Also watch out for the Netherlands' Ellen van Dijk. And one to watch out for, given the flat parkour, is British champion Hayley Simmons as well. Yeah, now the elite men, meanwhile, actually compete on the same course as the team time trial, which will then prove quite a good opportunity to get the exact course completely dialed in. Now, because it's on that course, so predominantly a straight line, wind could play a real factor. And at that time of year, the prevailing wind in Doha is northwesterly, meaning that they're going to potentially get a strong cross tail wind. That sounds very fast. It does, doesn't it? Who's got the biggest chain ring? Indeed. Tony Martin normally, isn't it? Uh, one rider who will He's be absent from the elite men's race is the four-time winner and the guy who won the Olympics time trial back in the summer, Fabian Cancellara. He's finally hung his wheels up. So in terms of the favourites, we can look to an informed Rowan Dennis who won the Eneco Tour time trial. He'll be riding for Australia, of course. Tony Martin, who's won this race three times in the past. He won the time trial at the Tour of Britain. Uh, Jonathan Castrovieca of Spain. He won the European Championships very recently. You can't count out Tom de Moulin, although his form hasn't been quite as good since the Tour de France in the summer. We've also got the likes of current world champion Vassil Kirienka and Steve Cummings of Great Britain. Like I said, whoever's got the biggest chain ring? It's normally how it works. Isn't Tony it? Martin, yeah, it's gotta be. We'll go who fastest. can turn the biggest chain ring the fastest? Given the pan flat course profile, the road races are touted as being ones for the sprinters, but that depends entirely on how the races pan out. Tactically, now the men's elite road race is 257 and a half kilometres. And first off, they face a 151 kilometre loop that takes them north from the Aspire Zone in Doha out into the desert before then tracking back south and commencing seven laps of a 15.2 kilometre circuit as used in the women's time trial. As we see year in, year out in the Tour of Kata, though, it is the wind that can really play a part in how things pan out. The question is, are we going to see the big teams controlling the race, or are we going to see a more disparate approach where smaller teams or individuals try and wreak havoc in the crosswinds? And please let that happen. That would be good for the spectator. It yeah. would, wouldn't it? For all the criticism level that the course, and to be fair, there has been a little bit, I think it could well be more intriguing than we first thought. No, definitely. Yeah, it has to be said, only the strongest can come out to play when the wind blows strong in Qatar. Actually, sorry, hang on a minute. No, we should probably clarify that because you finished fourth in the Tour of Qatar, so clearly there is some luck as well. Yeah. 
Right, the world's best sprinters will all be on the start line vying for the coveted rainbow band and the title of world champion. And they include current world champion Peter Sagan, who's been on some sterling form recently. He will have to make do with a relatively small national team there, but he has been able to deal with that and go on his own in the past. On the other end of the scale, Mark Cavendish will have eight other British riders surrounding him as he tries to go for his second world championships, having won it in 2011. But this championship, to me, seems all about teams with two big sprinters. Or even three. Add to the mix the German trio of John Degenkolb, Marcel Kittel and Andre Greipel, although at the time of filming this, the appointed leader of the German squad is Andre Greipel. But that could all change out on the road, depending on what happens, as you mentioned, Simon. Well, that's right. And then, of course, you've got Belgium, where you've got Tom Boonen, and he's going to be supported or vying for leadership with the likes of Greg Van Avermaet, Olympic champion. Imagine Caleb getting him in a break as well. As well for Australia, he'll have Michael Matthews either in support or vying for supremacy, whichever way it might be. Italy have got Giacomo Nizzolo and Elia Viviani. And we've also got the France. Netflix. They can have a full-on yeah. fist fight. Arna Dumas versus Nasser Buani fighting out in the restaurant the night before. One team that won't be fighting, they'll probably be the most politest team out there, will be Alexander Kristoff and Edvard Bersenhagen of Norway. That could be, I don't know, a remarkably polite duo. No, no please, Edvard, you take the lead. No, no, Alexander, no, please, you take the lead. Dylan though, I think he'll be the clear team leader for the Netherlands. Needs to leave that lad alone, don't you? The women's race covers 134.5 kilometres. It starts in the same place as the men's, but then it heads due east, 28 kilometres, for hitting the same finishing circuits that are 15 kilometres long. And they will also do seven laps. Now, without any major obstacles, if we're discounting 140 roundabouts, yeah. then a bunch sprint does look likely. And with that in mind, we're looking to Australian Chloe Hosking, the Italian Georgia Bronzini, and then also the Belgian rider Jolien Dor as well. Has to be said though, the strongest team looks to be the Netherlands. They've got the three-time former champion Mariana Vos. Anna van der Breggen, of course, won the Olympics back in August. Plus, they've got Kirsten Ville. Now, she's won the Tour of Qatar ladies race four times, and this course seems tailor-made for her. Uh, defending champion Lizzie Armitstead, now known as Lizzie Diagnan, will be on the start line. Not known as a pure sprinter, but there's no doubt she does rise to the big occasions. Yeah, who do you think is going to win? Who do you think we've missed out? Don't forget to leave your comments down below. But there's one thing we've forgotten. Yeah, there is. our predictions. Our predictions. To get away, Si. Georgia Bronzini and Tom Bonin. Right, Dan, your chance. Chloe Hosking and Peter Sagan. Come on then, Matt. Kirsten Vild and Mark Cavendish. Lasty? I predict that Elia Viviani will win the Men's World Rodeo Championships and Chloe Hosking is going to win the Women's. For Sai, explain your Tom Bonin rationale. Well, I'd probably say it's not rationale. I'm going for heart over head. Although he has probably got the greatest Palmares in Qatar ever and former world champion, I just, I just hope that he wins. I think it'd be amazing. It I think be, everyone would love it. It'd be immensely popular, wouldn't it, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt if he won it. And imagine retiring on the Roubaix Velodrome oh. with the rainbow bands on your shoulder after securing Stop a record-breaking fifth. It would just... I'm well enough Well, that's now. not going to happen now, is it? Uh, Matt, why Cav? You think he's still got it? I think, yeah. Well, he's clearly illustrated he's, he's got it without a shadow of a doubt and has beaten all the best sprinters this year in head-ons, of course, in the Tour de France. Had a bit of a kind of lull after that, but he does rise to the occasion and I know that he wants to win this again. I've just got a funny feeling. And my choice, Kirsten Vild, I think she's just built for this race. Again, we talked about the way she rides in the desert. It's pan flat. She's extremely well built, so fast. That's why I'm going for those two riders. Well, I'm kind of hedging my bets with Sagan because whether it's windy and like a classic or if it finishes in a chaotic bump sprint, he's still got a great chance of winning. And Chloe Hosking, well, she won a stage of the Tour of Qatar at the start of this year, up and coming sprint, and I think she might have what it takes. Uh, before we finish with this video, we must say a big thank you to Tom Waitley for providing us coverage of those multiple roundabouts on the Qatar circuit. Cheers, Tom. Very much looking forward to watching these races, I must admit. Absolutely. Right, now to whet your appetite even more, how about the how-to videos here on GCN. We have got how to ride in crosswinds. Pretty useful if you're heading over to Qatar. So click just up there and you get through to that video. We also got some sprint tips from Matt's man himself, Mark Cavendish. 
when we were in Dubai at the start of this year. And you can find them by clicking in the bottom corner. And to subscribe to GCN, you'll see a globe midway through the screen. Click on that. It's absolutely free. And don't forget to like and share as well. Midway through the screen. Mm. Yeah, I wonder what that was. Yeah.